is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? Hey, you guys. That you are a slave. Welcome back. Dysfunctionally functional life with Tam Collins. What's up? Yep, you guessed it. I'm headed to work and to get a couple things off my chest. Um, I was thinking back last year, I started a topic, started making a video talking about it on Facebook, control and manipulation in relationships, okay? Control and manipulation. And I did this video on Facebook and I was supposed to come back with a part two. I never forgot that. I kept it on file, it's very important to me. And I promised in that video to talk about the ways in which a toxic person in a relationship or a narcissistic person will use coercive control and manipulation to manage you down, to get you to do what they want, and to shift the way that you see them that you see yourself it's like a spiral it eats into your whole entire life and it can be very hard to pick up on for a long time what exactly is going on because most of us who are just normal well-balanced people pretty emotionally well regulated we have a good heart even those of us who have had trauma in the past and somehow work through all of that maybe we used to be toxic as well those of us though that have come to a certain level of maturity in our emotions and in our life most of us are going to want to show compassion to a person that tells us a sob story are we not right okay follow me here right most of us are going to feel something when someone tells us they've been hurt in the past this is what happened yada 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 then we're gonna show them some kind of compassion or feeling about that and that's kinda gonna soak into us a little bit and if we're not careful if we're in a close relationship with someone giving them that sympathy giving them that compassion when they throw that sob story on us that's it right there when we do that that is how they gain control that is their sneaky snaky cowardly way of gaining control now in this video I'm 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 really talking about toxic people in general because not every toxic person is a narcissist there are people with just you know different types of toxic issues they may just be a codependent person um, low self-esteem they can't find themselves unless they have someone attached to their leg at all times they may just be you know whatever there's there's many different types of toxic people they may not be a narcissist and so I'm basically talking about all toxic people but in this video I'm going to specifically talk about the covert hidden narcissist okay if you're in a close relationship with a person like that these types of narcissists feel so inferior they feel so empty inside they they lack confidence they lack social skills they lack effective communication and coping skills they are really on a childlike level emotionally it's really hard for them okay they carry an enormous amount of shame inside and all of these things go back to their childhood um, whatever what happened abuse neglect shaming someone told them not to speak up someone made them feel bad for it whatever so this type of narcissist does not have the same confidence that the grandiose narcissist does the one that's just more in your face give me what I want you know whatever this covert narcissist I'm talking about is very sneaky very hidden they play a character 
you would never know in a million years that they're actually that guy underneath that mask. They play the charming, sweet, innocent, oh, I'm not like so-and-so. I don't believe in treating women that way. And I'll warn you right now, some of my videos are going to be blunt, crude, graphic, uh, language, uncensored, and that's just the mood I'm in. That's how it's going to come out. So my apologies in advance. I'm sorry if you don't like that or if that's offensive to you please just move along it's okay um, but yeah that's what I say to that and guys when you see an attitude on me when you see an attitude on somebody like that you better know that that person has been through hell and back with toxic people and you need to understand they've already been a doormat they've already been that wide open heart compassionate girl that loved beyond love that laid down her life that broke her back and bent over backwards for a toxic person or more toxic people several in her life you better know that she's already been there she's already been devoured by these fucking snakes on more than one occasion so that's where she gets that tough ass attitude you have to to survive these people and I'm done I'm done with the guilt trippers the shamers all that kind of crap there's a wonderful creator on YouTube who teaches all about this um, that to be a loving compassionate person or an empathic or empathetic person to feel deeply for others and be a good person you do not have to be a doormat in fact the more loving and compassionate and authentic you really are, actually, the more fucking fierce you are. That's right. Because we are so loving, because we are so compassionate, because we have gone that extra mile for the well-being of someone else and put those people before ourselves, because we do have so much depth of character and integrity and humility and, and love for others, we have to protect it fiercely. That's right. So that's going to come in that package. The more fierce and outspoken and boundary filled you see a person being, that means that they are authentic, that they're real, and that they are having to balance out and protect those beautiful loving qualities because of the snakes in the world that will devour that and use it for their own toxic agendas. So. Don't be so quick to judge a fierce person with an attitude. There's a difference between being fierce, outspoken, and having bulletproof boundaries. I got that from Pete Sapper at Empath Uprising. There's a difference between having bulletproof boundaries, being fierce, knowing what you want out of life, knowing what you will not tolerate, not being stepped on, being a highly motivated, confident person, there's a difference in that and being a damn narcissist. The grandiose narc who just parades around stomping all over everybody, and they are fierce as well. So sometimes, as Pete teaches, it can be hard to tell the difference between a loving, compassionate, motivated person who is out for the well-being of others, they are an empath, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes between them um, and their highly motivated, highly outspoken, and I'm talking about a highly awakened empath. And if you really want to get into it, there's several different types of empaths, okay? A lot of people have just this, again, just like they have on the narcissism side, a lot of people are not really, really deeply educated on the levels of empathy and the different types of empaths. There's a dark empath, a toxic empath, that's right. Those are generally your more victim-oriented, codependent. I help everybody and I only get stepped on and they are literally feeding into toxicity. They are the type of compassionate empath who's actually doing more damage than good. They are still in their toxic mind. They are not facing their own issues and they are feeding a narcissist what the narcissist wants. 
They're giving the narcissist time, energy, love, money. They are enabling. And they're laying down and being a doormat for that narcissist. Because they are very codependent. Yes, there are those types of empaths walking around the world claiming to be good people. And they are good people, but they're also very sick and toxic at the same time. So, that's not an empath, though. That's not, that's not the highest meaning of the word. That's not the highest version of an empath. Now, a highly awakened empath who has faced down their dark night, dark night of the soul, who's walked through that, walking through that, who is facing down their childhood wounds, working through their issues, they're coming through all kinds of hell, they are no longer laying down as a doormat. They are standing up with bulletproof boundaries, as Pete says at Empath Uprising. They are laying the law down. They are practicing good self-care. What does Pete say? Defiant self-care. That's right. And there's a difference between defiant self-care and being a narcissistic jerk. So let's get it understood. So many people misunderstand these things. Well, isn't that narcissistic? Isn't that selfish? If you just cut everybody off and defiantly take care of yourself? No, it's not. There's a big difference. Absolutely a big difference between what a narcissist does and how they treat everybody and when a person is setting down strong boundaries and practicing defiant self-care. Defiant self-care means you're going to have rules, boundaries, and limitations. You're not going to let people walk over those. You're going to make sure whatever your body needs, your nutritional, your rest, your work schedule, your meditation and exercise schedules, whatever your body needs to function at the highest level at the level that's going to make you feel the best. That is what defiant self-care is. It means you're learning to say no. No, 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 no to all the vultures. No, no, no to all the people that will eat up your time and energy without a thought in their head for your well-being. That is not being a narcissist, I'm sorry to tell you. Not at all. And even if you say it with attitude, no, I will not hang out with you today. I'm sorry. I have to take care of myself today. No, I'm sorry. I have other plans. No, I can't come and get you. I'm going to take a nap. Okay? And that's when you'll see a disrespectful person who has no boundaries or a narcissist go off the deep end. You what? You're gonna what? You don't have anything going on. You're just sitting. What do you mean? You're just sitting and reading a book? You're taking a nap. You can come get me. You can come do for me. They will run your ass in the ground like that. Okay? So, big, big difference. They have no right to treat you that way. And you have every right to say, no, I will not come and get you. No, I'm sorry. I don't have time for that today. I am resting right now. That is defiant self-care and strong boundaries. And you have every right to do that. And nope, it's not a narcissist. It's not the type of selfishness that a narcissist actually practices. It's a whole different thing. A narcissist is not... A narcissist doesn't, isn't selfish... Isn't practicing selfish and defiant self-care for positive, productive, and healthy reasons. A narcissist, first of all, isn't practicing self-care most of the time, especially the coverts. Um, they don't love themselves. They're not going to take the time out to set those boundaries, to get their proper rest, to get their proper nutrition, to get their proper health and medical and mental well-being care, all that stuff. They're not into that. They're not selfish. They are selfish in a different way is what I'm trying to say. So people need to get that clear. Self-care is not selfish, but that's not what the narcissist is doing. They're not doing self-care. They are being self-absorbed and purely selfish. 
there's a big damn difference than a highly awakened person, self-actualized person, highly awakened empathic person, um, practicing their good self-care and shutting people down and telling them no. Big, big difference. The narcissist is just being a selfish asshole. It's not because they want to care for their body or put something into their mental health and then when they bounce back later, they're going to be like the highly awakened empath or, or the highly awakened person. They're going to rise up after they've gotten their rest and go out and help others again and really be caring and compassionate about their friends once they've rested they're going to be the normal loving person they generally are they're going to have some time for others they're going to be into serving others they're going to be into thinking of the well-being of others the fucking narcissist is not doing that they are a whole different ball game when they act selfishly it is purely for selfish reasons it's not so they can get a nap so that later on they can go help out at the food bank or rest themselves up and regain their power so that later on they can return that strength into contributing to humanity somehow or checking on family members being of assistance to someone or just working on self it's not so they can get up and be an example to others and do really positive things and be that example for the world work on healing themselves so that other people might see that and catch on and be an inspiration no 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 they are selfish for other reasons it's purely centered around their ego and getting their needs met and it's highly toxic needs at that highly toxic agendas and that is all the narcissist ever revolves around that is why they're selfish either no I can't do that for you or yeah I'll do that for you what's in it for me that's the type of thinking or I'm not gonna do that for you unless I'm getting something out of it you know that's the type of thinking with them okay so if you ever get confused on well I'm confused because the regular people that are actually whole and healthy and they think on a loving and compassionate level and the nar and the grandiose narcissist they act a lot alike sometimes when y'all you healthy people go to talking about slamming boundaries down and what you're not gonna do and you get all fierce and you start standing up for yourself and telling everybody no and acting all selfish and high and mighty uh, 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 uh. defiant self-care like Pete teaches over at Empath Uprising check it out defiant self-care is different from the selfishness of a narcissist that's right and I explained to you a second ago what the difference is how the normal healthy whole person the, the awakened empath person the um, person who is working on self-actualization, uh, becoming more whole as a human being, how they're going to act, and how that damn narcissist is going to act. So, anyway, let's get on into the control and manipulation part of this. The covert narcissist, especially, and I have had experience with both, I've had experience with people that are both at once, that weave in and out of covert and grandiose. Um, I have been that person in my younger years. I've done both um, and had to work a lot on myself to grow out of that and heal from that. But they will have your mind so manipulated and so coerced and managed down and at that same time they will be getting away with murder near murder I mean they will be getting away with all sorts of shit they will literally have you changing a lot about yourself just to make them feel better because they're, they, they are constantly needy constantly emotionally needy constantly insecure and they a lot of times a covert narcissist cannot communicate with you like an adult. 
they will not ever look at you and say, listen, I really need to tell you some things about what I'm feeling. Because I'm feeling deeply insecure today. You know, you said something or something occurred where I'm a little confused and it made me feel a little off. So can we discuss it? Get it on the table? Never, never, never will they ever do that, okay? They will just start thinking shit up in their head about you. It's called perceived threats versus real threats. The narcissist imagines things about you. That's right. They make shit up in their head that you're going to do to them. Mm-hmm. And they start punishing you for those things before... They never give you a chance, okay? This is how fucking damaged they are. And I know everybody wants to feel for them. Look, I was an abused child. I came through trauma. If anybody wants to feel for people that have been through some shit in childhood, it's me. But I'm going to tell you what that got me. That got me kicked in the fucking face and betrayed. Once these people grow up, they're not cute little boys and girls anymore. Oh, let me save you, honey. I'm sorry that your childhood was nobody loved you and nobody made you feel. Fuck that shit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Once they're grown, uh-uh. I do not care how deeply I know that heart's going to bleed for them, honey, because mine does. It's just going to bleed. That makes you a toxic empath. I've been there. I've been one. That makes you a codependent empath. Your heart's just bleeding for them. Oh, my God. I just have to help them. I've been in those shoes, and I know how bad it hurts. Poor them. I have to help them. Let me lay down like a doormat. Please, stomp on me. Take anything you want. I'll do anything you say. That makes you a no self-respect having, no self-esteem having, no identity having, very insecure, toxic-ass person yourself. And you are doing nothing but keeping a toxic cycle going when you give in to a narcissist like that. So you might want to recognize what you got going on. You're just as toxic as they are. That's right. Been there and done that one too. So, but what will happen is with these covert narcissists, especially if they get involved with someone who's already done the work, boy, then they're really shriveling up on the inside. You know, they want to get in, boy. They're trying to figure out any way they can maneuver into your life, what they're going to need to say, how they're going to need to mirror you and reflect back everything you like. You know, they're really thinking about it inside when they get with a super confident person who's already done their work and they are no bullshitter, they're highly motivated. Um, they've got to find a way in and a way to break you down and sort of grab control of your mind because you're so powerful. And these types are not powerful. They are so empty and inferior feeling and just all of those toxic things inside of them but they're not going to let you know that you know they're going to portray a certain amount of that to you but they're not going to tell you the honest truth about what's going on in the back of their head so they will find ways to make you feel just as empty just as insecure just as inferior and worthless and empty as they do inside they will work non-stop to make you feel just like that it might not be something they say but it's in their actions it's in the maneuvers they pull it might be stuff they say it really just all depends on the person for instance if you tell them you had a traumatic background and you were abused in your family if you tell them that your last partner cheated on you or that your last partner was the type of person that was very insecure and they were always looking for themselves in other people and maybe they didn't necessarily cheat but all they did was spend their time on the internet just oogling nothing better to do than just oogle girls all day and lurk around on their photos and just act act like a fool while you're gone to work and you're trying to be responsible and be loyal and you're filling your head with things of substance and you're really trying to work on being a whole and mature adult that's what their fool ass was laid up doing because they were screwed up they were insecure right 
they thought they were going to find some kind of redemption or some kind of ego boost out there online oogling and lurking on women's Facebook pictures and telling them how hot they are and signing up on dating sites and <laughs> and I say oogling because it's funny. I know it's not called oogling, it's ogling. No, what is it? Is it oogling or ogling? I think it's ogling. <laughs> but I like calling it oogling because it just sounds so weird and stupid. Because it's a weird and stupid thing that they do. Especially if they have a loyal, loving, down for them, motivated ass partner that's as good as gold. These people are fools. They are fools all day. And it's because they've got issues. They got some issues, man, okay? It's because the covert narcissism is some split off in childhood. They never felt good about themselves. They feel ashamed, inferior, insecure. They don't even feel good enough to be in your damn presence. But they're not going to let you know that. They'll let you know it to a degree, but no. They're not going to let you know the deepest, darkest, sickest secrets going on back there. They're going to try their best to fit in and act like a normal person. That things they've memorized other people in relationships say, like, I love you. Um, yeah, I'm a good person. Uh, you know, it's like they're running on a script. They can, they can try to fit in and be normal. But when it comes to carrying out, you're going to start seeing glitches in their matrix real quick. A glitch in their program real quick and it's fucking weird they cannot carry out those actions they can say words but they can't be that it's it's the weirdest thing ever but so while they're doing all that weird shit say right say you're there's people involved in a situation like that and so if you get involved with a new person and you tell them, yes, in my past, these are the types of people I ran across. They were doing all these weird things and I don't want any part of that anymore. It was very toxic. I've been damaged in my past, but I've been working on it. I'm in therapy. I'm aware of my patterns and I want to go forward from here. I really don't want to get too serious too quickly, but here we are. Okay, we're getting involved. And say you have a person that's really on the level like that, man. They are loyal. They're facing down their past wounds. And they had these traumatic, weird people in their life in the past, right? Let me tell you what a fucking covert narcissist will do. Everything that you just sat and told them, all of your trauma, everything that made you feel insecure or less than about yourself or hurt, the fucking covert narcissist that you're now with will take every one of those things and do those exact things to you all over again. That's exactly what they're looking for. They are looking for a way in, a weakness in you because they are so weak and so pathetic. They feel so weak and so pathetic. They feel so worthless and so powerless because they're fucking lazy number one and they will not face their own problems they will not build their own confidence they will not build their own ideas and creativity that's why they feel that way they refuse to do the work so anyway that's what they will grab onto those very traumatic things you told them instead of doing what a normal loving caring well-regulated person would do a person who's on the up and up, who really cares for you and wants to get to know you, typically they want to know what you've been through in the past so that they can be careful not to do that same thing again, right? They want to know what hurts you or what makes you uncomfortable. I usually ask that stuff right up front. What do you prefer? What are your boundaries? That's a sign of a healthy person that talks to you that way. If, if somebody doesn't ask you that kind of thing, I'd get worried a little bit. Well, what do you prefer? What's your limit? What are your boundaries? And if they start talking that shit of, oh man, whatever, you know, it's whatever. Anything goes, what's mine is yours, what's yours is theirs. If they start talking that shit, out, out. 
That's right. I make a lot of people mad as fuck. I don't care. Y'all's any old kind of way ass. Get that shit up out of my house and out of my face. No, any old kind of way. No, and I'm not down, man. I'm not the cool girl, man. We don't play that shit at Tam's house. We got rules, regulations, and boundaries over here. <laughs> and motherfucker will come in with a mask on, right? Claiming they love that. Ooh, I love you for that. You're a strong woman. I just love it. And then get down the line and you find out they are energetically undermining your ass the whole time. 24 hours a day. They resent your ass. You will find out they want to control, manipulate, and manage you down. I'll be back in part two to tell you more of the ways that they... The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us.